We got our coffee in, buddy. Hey guys. And my phone is on the ground. Welcome to. I should put more. No, I need this. Welcome to a more. Well, no, I'm not gonna say it's a solemn episode of Fan Splash. I'll just say it's uh, different. It's a different episode. It's not something that we. It's got really a little bit do. more of a serious tone. We have lost the one celebrity I've been saying for at least ten years of my life. There will only be one that's really going to get me. Robin Williams hurt. He did. But no one has as much influence or impact, whether it be, you know, kind of indirectly. But there's a series of events and things that you can follow all the way back to uh, Stanley is the point that I'm trying to make, I guess. We lost uh, Stanley at 95 years old. And I think the second he hit 90, every time his name popped up in an article, most of us hold our breath. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I got to meet him two years ago briefly at uh, Emerald City Comic Con. There's a lot of people I wanted to see there. There, Jason Momoa was there. Ron Perlman was there. Um, There was... uh, It was smart. What's it? It was smart. They met with uh, Stanley. I, I, I knew, <laughs> or I had, a, I had a feeling. I was like, I don't think I'll get another chance. And when I you get somebody that old, yeah, you know. <laughs> and also, you don't take chances. Nobody else was on my bucket list. And very quickly after that, he stopped doing that because his health had declined it was, so bad. It was within a year. Yeah. Within. So, Stan Lee, man. Stan the man Lee. The, the godfather of Marvel Comics, not just... So let's, let's, let's take a look at this. Let's um, go back to um, what Brody said in Mallrats. You're responsible for some of the greats, so let's list them. Well, we've got a Wolverine poster over here. It's decommissioned because I accidentally broke it. We've got... Gosh, countless uh, um, Marvel... Ant Man is his. Spider Man. Pops. We've Hulk. got, you know, yeah, Black Panther. We've got, we've got, we've got a lot of Marvel support here. We are, we are obviously very huge fans of Marvel. And he didn't create Captain America, but he took Captain America and put him into the spotlight. Sure, you know there, um, there were a lot of uh, co-created rather. Um, uh, superheroes that are very famous Marvel wise that um, Stanley is giving the majority of the credit for that he shouldn't necessarily have the full credit for but can we agree that Stanley took the Marvel catalog and took it to the HNL for sure absolutely and even if you know there's shared credit amongst uh, character creation the fact of the matter is that he was the face and the gas in the engine of uh, Marvel Comics. If not initially, it got to the point where most things were happening because he was involved. Let's um, let's put this into perspective. His his cameos, which he's been most famous for recently. <sighs> He was doing cameos in early Marvel films when uh, comic book films were first starting to take massive um, cinematic attention. And then um, Marvel sold to Disney and Disney acquired Marvel. And Stanley continued on in those cameos, but not just solely the Disney owned Marvel stuff, but things that uh disney did not have the cinematic rights to such as x-men and spider-man and things like that so he wasn't 100 percent loyal to the uh marvel cinematic universe as it sold and i think that um that really speaks to him as a character in the sense that um he just believed in these comic book characters you know and he believed in getting them out there to the people and um yeah, just, just supporting all these things that came from the comics and, and pushing them. There's a lot I want to talk about, about like what comics he made and why. But and I'm just... sure he knew that with the expansion of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Spider-Man would probably be rebooted again. But did he do a fantastic cameo in uh, the, Amazing Spider-Man? the Amazing Spider-Man? Absolutely. 
he was there, man. That's a top three, for sure. Yeah. Oh, dude, that that might be my number one. And um, I'm gonna let you take it for a couple minutes, Jesse. Okay. Um, I, I have a few things that I wanted to touch on, and one of the first questions that I wanted to ask. Um, and if you guys have a, a point to make on this too, please comment and let us know because I'd love to hear from you. We had an open, or I had an open discussion on uh, the Fan Splash page uh, where I went live and just took a lot of things, um, comments from you guys. We just discussed the life of Stan Lee and the influence that he had. But uh, what I want to take right now is the chance to say what I would like to say if Stan was, you know, sitting in front of us today, if I ever got the chance to say more than I did at Comic Con, which is just, you know, lean over a little bit. I said thank you because I didn't, I didn't know what to, mm-hmm. what to really say to him, and they were pushed, pushed me out so fast. And I'm sure he just thought I was thanking him for the the pictures, but I was, I wanted to thank him for Marvel. Like right. I wanted to thank him for, for a lot of things. I wanted to thank him for for my life, like. <laughs> Everything well, Marvel was your introduction into everything that you are now. This whole fan splash thing, it wouldn't have happened right now if it wasn't for X Men and Spider Man. Stan's characters were the big bang of my life. And outside of skateboarding, everything else has you can all you can follow the string, the conspiracy string, and it all leads back to X Men and Spider Man. Uh, so if Stan was here. Um, and hopefully he's he's listening from the the great beyond, being the washer that he is. Uh, I would want to say thank you for bringing us characters that are not just for entertainment value. You drastically changed the comic industry as a whole by focusing on making these these superhuman characters people first. And I just watched an interview with him recently where he was saying that what was most important to him is that behind every mask and cape was a person that would make the same choices and mistakes that anybody else would make. They weren't flawless, whereas before we were familiar with characters like Superman, who could pretty much do no wrong at that point. He was just this flawless beacon of hope. And we got characters like Iron Man, who was a raging alcoholic. We had Spider-Man, who was in his teens. And teenagers are far from perfect. They're early in their adolescence. Um, Iron Man was a character that you weren't supposed to like, but grew to like. Anyways, just just despite it. Um, But even more so than Spider-Man... Um, obviously, I watched the Spider-Man 90s cartoon. I watched the X-Men 90s cartoon. But it was X-Men that really resonated with me because I was an outcast in school. I got treated pretty horribly growing up in elementary and junior high. And here was um, characters that not only did I view as being badass, but like no matter how cool they were, no matter how badly I wanted their powers, they were treated like outcasts. They were met with fear and hatred. And despite everything pushed to push for equality pushed to be fair to be treated fairly they didn't want to you know become villains they didn't want to rule the world they just wanted their you know their piece of the pie they just wanted to live in peace and harmony and stan lee coming up with a superhero reflection of the civil rights movement when it wasn't cool to do that it wasn't um you know it wasn't kosher it wasn't uh it's just not what people are doing. Having characters like Black Panther, adding diversity yeah, to these Think about the balls to make Magneto the villain of that. Magneto was the guy that was the radical. Mm-hmm. The uh, Malcolm X, rather, of the uh, X-Men. But he made a villain that was ar- arguably, you know, it's it's it, to me it's kind of what started that concept of a hero in their own mind. Uh-huh. And Magneto is one of the greatest personifications of that is because you can like there's reason behind what he does there's right. rationality right 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 you can understand and you can sympathize with it it's a great plot element in uh, movies as recent as black panther um there is the villain that you understand on a personal level and you get where they're coming from and you're, you you identify with them and I think that as early on as the X-Men, when we, when you really think about how 
far back the X-Men go when you really think about how old Stan Lee was. <laughs> um, that you just get somebody, you know, as fleshed out as Magneto and with his polar opposite being, uh, you know, obviously Charles Xavier, you get these characters that have such depth and to think that he did that tenfold with, you know, so many other Marvel characters that it's just, you know, the list goes on and on and on and on and on. Um, well beyond X-Men and well beyond Spider-Man and, and well beyond what, you know, just the everyday person uh, is, is super familiar with. There are people who's, you know, like even super fanboys whose lives were touched directly by Stanley in his creation and uh, the universes that he created and the characters that he started that other writers took the helm of and created fantastic stories with. Uh, Stanley really, really, truly left his mark on the modern world of cinema and entertainment. And to think that it all started with uh, comic books, it's, uh, it, it's, it's crazy to believe. You want to talk about the word, you know, legacy. Legacy, yeah. What he has done, created, and the lives that he has um, inspired will go on and on and on for, you know, 10, 20 times his lifespan. When uh, some people think, man, these Marvel movies are getting um, to be a lot, and there's so much Marvel that I can't, you know, keep up with it. Um, we've had enough already. There's, there's, there's so much Marvel. Um, just think of what, you know, this guy and a couple other co-creators created this entire universe, this entire universe of these completely fleshed out characters. Like Jesse mentioned earlier, every superhero is a person before they're a hero. So they were all personified. If you've ever read any uh, Stephen King novel, you know, you like really fleshes out like who this person is before they he describes like anything else about like them or like their supernatural ability or whatever the hell the book's about. You know, he just gets like down into their idiosyncrasies. And um, that's something that uh, Marvel characters have in common is they're very, very, very well. And I'll say it again, fleshed out. And so when you think of, wow, a entire universe has actually really been created. I mean, it really has. Don't you agree? I absolutely like, agree. It's just, it's insane that fiction can go this far. Fiction can go as far as multiple realities, multiple different timelines, multiple different um, tales of, of, of one, two... Or hundreds of heroes going this way or that way in in alternate timelines, things like that. Different tellings, different stories, different this is or that's, civil wars, infinity wars. And it's just crazy to believe that there are these characters that he created on paperback comic books that are so fleshed out that they can have their story told in countless ways and countless runs and the fact that one person could even keep up with them is just fucking astronomical and then you get people like jesse who do their very best to do that and uh what what how do you think that um this impacts them it's um i mean it's it's hard to put into words and you think about how long comics and various um medias existed before Stan really came into his own with the comics and where did we hear with great power comes great responsibility that is directly from Stan and that is something that that quote that ideal that viewpoint that um, moral code compass what have you is something that should never fade and I think that um, a lot of who I am and what I've learned and how to be like just a good person, try to be better than, um, you know, better than, uh, better than your average person is from what I learned from the characters that he made. I later in life became 
just because the, of the grandioseness and like the godlike elements, I became a bigger fan of DC. I, it's just fun to read. Mm-hmm. But when I talk about what speaks to me and what I feel like is being written for me, it was the Marvel characters. And I like that you're not pretending with that. You know, like I when when I'm thinking about like um you know like um the sheer entertainment value of of something i i do want to lean more towards dc but i think that familiarity wise and as far as like everything that i know almost all of it's marvel and i think that dc has that excitement factor to it is because it's so new to me uh because i grew up almost solely on marvel and i loved marvel so much i was i was practically a loyalist the fact that i even like dc as much as i do now is only because I've loved Marvel for so long that DC just seems like a um, like an exciting outsider, you know, like sure. a, like a like a new girlfriend <laughs> or something like that. You know what I mean? So um, so I, I get what you're saying in in terms of that, um, but but uh, but I respect that you know you're you're not you're not hiding anything. And bringing it back to to Stan for a second, what? he did with the diversity and representation and putting characters first not only changed marvel comics but drastically changed the competition as well it was i think only through his inspiration that dc was able to try to tell interesting and engaging stories of superman and batman that aren't just about the flash bang boom it was about bruce Mm -hmm. it was about clark Right, and I don't think we would have gotten that without him, or it would have been years and years later until somebody figured out that that's how you do it. Right. Yeah. So it direct directly affected DC in that way too, and I would agree with you. And let's talk about this. Let's talk about the greatest cinematic achievement of all time, arguably, um, to me, and that would be the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I mean, who would think? How many films along are we? We are, I believe, Ant-Man and the Wasp was number 20. So we're going on our 21st and 22nd film. And uh, and the hype is just still there 100%. We're, we're it still, only grows. It only grows. We're still there 100%. 22 films all tied together. Has that ever happened before? No. Do you think it will ever happen again this successfully anytime soon? You know, because think about movies that we've had that started in the 70s. Star Wars. What right. Are we at? We're, I think, 10 films when we throw Rogue One and Solo in there. Right. About, uh, and that started in 78. Right. And it's 2018. Um, And so, yeah, we have 10. Marvel is over doubling that. No, no, I, I just don't see anything going that long. Um, the Harry Potter franchise, we were on our 10th movie as well. Uh, Fast and Furious has had eight movies. Um, James Bond has had countless movies, but they're not all connected. Right. It's not all one continuous storyline. You right. can't trace. They reboot each other every time Bond is re- reborn. But you can trace this Avengers that's coming out in May to Iron Man 1 in 2008. And it's only been nine years or ten years they just 11, t- 11 years yeah. sorry 11 years at the point that uh avengers 4 comes out 11 years and this many films and do you would think do you think that any other franchise could go that hard that fast and not just come across as tiresome and ridiculous but oh. no each fucking movie has its own and excuse my cursing in in this memorial but um each film has its own unique diverse character and element to it and power and it's got its own individual appeal and so the fact that all the films have their own individual appeal to them and then the fact that they just happen to all converge together that is just a plus and I, I think it speaks volumes um, on how they've adapted uh, his characters and his collaborative or collaborators characters in the way that when we talk about DC, we're usually saying uh, Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman. 
when we talk about Marvel, we're saying Tony, Steve, Natasha, mm-hmm. Bruce, because not only were they written in the comics, but the way they've been portrayed in the movie, it's like, these are people you could know. This right. is a world that could exist. Right. And DC's always been more grandiose. I'm not trying to make this about Marvel versus DC. I'm just trying to sing Stan's praises in the way that he drastically changed uh, this material and how it's been reflected on the I can't screen. believe something that was just paper ideas on a graphic novel in the 60s is now the biggest universe in cinematic history. It's not close either. It, no, the comic the is that not came. even close. And Stan Lee is a massive part of that. And, and the fact that, that we can fanboy about so much stuff, Wolverine, Black Panther, Captain America, any of this stuff, it's, it's all thanks to him. And 95, man, like... 95 is a fantastic run. I would hope that I can make it to 95. I always think that I'm going to die at like 30 from like cancer or something or a car accident. But um, it, it's also sad because you're like, man, he should have broke 100. You know, man? He, she, Kevin Kevin Feige posted that. Like, you know, he, he thought that we would never lose Stan, that he would go yeah. on living forever. And I think, you know, honestly, in his in his memory and his achievements, he, he will. Um, and you said fantastic. You know what we have not talked about at all? Fan four stick. One of his biggest. I mean, not that movie, but one of his biggest achievements ever, next to Spider Man, was the Fantastic Four. Yeah, Marvel's first family. Uh, their Fantastic Four inspired every other team up. Yeah, it was after Fantastic Four that we got Justice League. It was after Fantastic Four that we got the Avengers. It was the first time that they really had like. It wasn't just a crossover. It's like mm-hmm. the main story were these four characters. Right. Um, Before it was just all standalone characters. It was all standalone. Or like and maybe small you'd have, team-ups. You'd have Batman right. and Robin or Batman right. meets Superman, right? right? But it was a crossover. that You did not have any leading title that was a, a group franchise. And I think it's really unfortunate that Stan could never see those characters get their due. Right, I think that is um, absolutely tragic. It's not fair. I mean, that is absolutely so unfair. Much. But do you think that he got to see a decent cut of Avengers Four? I don't know. I don't know what his health was like in the last few months. I don't know how much he was out. Do you think like if he knew enough, he'd be like, "Well, can I at least see Avengers Four? Like, you know I wouldn't I mean? even like, stress about it because I'm just imagining Stan sitting and watching Infinity War. Okay. And just what that had to feel like. And you know Stan's favorite character is Spider-Man. And I know that he loved Homecoming. That's good. Um, so Homecoming I think... was great, dude. Homecoming tears me apart because I don't know if I want that to be my favorite Spider-Man movie or Amazing Spider-Man 2. And, uh, which is funny, this is the two most recent Spider-Man movies. But everybody gets their own opinions. You know, Spider-Man 2, Spider-Man, or, you know, Homecoming... Not a lot of people agree with me on the Amazing Spider-Man thing. But anyway, I, I, Spider-Man's one of my favorite characters of all time, too. So I agree with Stan. What's very important about what Stan's done is you can point to pretty much any Marvel character, and that's somebody's favorite character. Mm-hmm. That character changed their life. It could be Wolverine. 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 <laughs> Black Panther changed people's lives. Having Storm be a member of X-Men changed people's lives. Yeah. Little black girls got to read a comic or watch a movie and see themselves in it. Where it, it Superman, maybe an alien, looked Caucasian. Batman, Caucasian male. Captain Marvel, Caucasian male. There was a trend with mm-hmm. a lot of stuff. First Green Lantern, Caucasian male. Mm-hmm. Stan said no. This is the the world is a melting pot of ethnicities and cultures and orientations and things mm-hmm. and like they should all be represented um and everyone should have have their place and everyone should have an idol that they can look up to and somebody they can dress up as for halloween mm-hmm. um and so i think that's that's you know when we're talking about his legacy something that is uh, really important um i got i got most of what i wanted to say as far as what i would say to him if he was here but if you could address him directly what would you want to tell him? How has his creations and what he's done affected you personally? Well, granted, we don't have the massive following that I would want with this uh, podcast, but I always say I just do it for fun, man. 
And I would not be doing this for fun if it was not for X Men. X Men and Spider Man. I am in the same boat. What was our longest even. podcast? X Men. X Men was three hours long, by the way, guys. Um, that's episode eleven of Fan Splash. That's actually on our old channel. It's it's been a while. Um, but if it were not for X Men and Spider Man, man, I would not be a nerd by any sorts. I would not be a fanatic of any sorts. I wouldn't be a fan of Doctor Who or Supernatural or any of the other things that I love. You know, I um. I wouldn't be a, an, an apologist for these Netflix shows. I wouldn't like DC or uh, or or Batman or any of that shit. Like I, it was, it's all because of X Men and Spider Man, and that is all because of um, a big help from Stan Lee. So, um, would any of this be here without him? I don't think so. Um, if I'm being completely honest, I, I do not think so. Would half of these actors have the career that they do now? <laughs> would Robert Downey Jr. I was going to say Robert Downey Jr. Hole. would never have come back from the uh, rehab hell um, that he did. Um, Stanley but... said, if you're blind, if you're disabled, you can be a superhero. Yeah. If you're black, right. you can be a superhero. Right. If you're gay, you can be a superhero. If you're Asian, you can be a superhero. If you're a woman, you'd be if you're a, a woman, I was trying to think if I said that already. No. But yeah. Um, but yeah. Um, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm not like pretending or anything. Like maybe maybe DC would have commercialized really well. Maybe, uh, you know, we would be praising God knows who. Um, Jeff just Johns much. like 50 years later. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that, I was, that's funny is that's the name that comes to mind is Jeff Johns for GC, DC. Um, maybe, um, but, uh, I don't, I don't think so, man. It's, it's, it's hard to believe without Stan Lee because Stan Lee's the name that just comes to mind. All right. Um, because we're talking about his creations and this might be a hard pull, but what would be your favorite Marvel character? My favorite Marvel character is Wolverine. I mean, that's, that's tough to argue. I feel like that was the first. It's a good go-to, but one of my favorite movies of all time is Logan. And as recent as it is, dude, that movie was great. It was so good. And it only just solidified how much I loved Wolverine. Man, X-Men, the movie coming out, the first X-Men movie, uh, I loved the character of Wolverine prior. And I was so excited to see him on the big screen. And I was so happy by his portrayal. And I just remember even just the, 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 the like previews. For the movie and stuff like that. I was just so excited to see X-Men. I went and saw... Oh, yeah. Uh, it's me. Prove it. You're a dick. I went and saw it over Pokemon, dude. Pokemon was in theaters and I went and saw X-Men. Because... Pokemon 2000. Yes. Pokemon 2000 and X-Men were in theaters at the same time. And I was a very young child. And I picked X-Men. So that should say a lot, man. Like... I fucking love X Men. I love Wolverine. I used to like Cyclops more, but it went a lot more. I used to run me. around the schoolyard with three sticks in each hand. Yeah, going, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and you wonder why I was bullied. <laughs> uh, Wolverine was my, I think Wolverine was my favorite, not just Marvel character. Wolverine was my favorite comic book character right up until it was Batman. Which yeah. was like 18, 19, 20 or something. Yeah. So that's like more uh, than a, a decade. For a very long time. For a very Wolverine long time was like was Wolverine. Unchanging. Yeah. Um, and then like my, my second, third, fourth, fifth characters were all X-Men characters. Right. It was Gambit. It was Nightcrawler. Mm -hmm. It was... Um, oh, I loved Gambit for a very long time. By the way, bring Gambit into Deadpool because I know that Deadpool will do it right. It's weird that Deadpool is the one that gets all these mm -hmm. juggernaut right. And, anyway, uh, so yeah, I mean, I, I save us a little bit of time by just but just agreeing. And I'm not gonna lie, I almost had a these these claws here when uh, when I got them. I almost had a tear in my eye. I put them on, and I was just like, I want to be in a movie. I want to be Wolverine. I always wanted to be Wolverine. I had dreams of having claws and a healing factor. Did you, dude? It's so crazy. It's like, oh man, he's immortal, and I want that. But no, we're probably gonna die in a car accident. No, 
Um, I couldn't stand Lee have a healing factor. Like that's that's just what I wish for him. <laughs> when you put on these claws, it makes you feel like when we were a kid, there were a lot of Jackie Chan movies oh, coming yeah. out. Yeah. And when you walked out of a Jackie Chan movie in the theaters, you were like, "Wow!" Because <laughs> you think you know kung fu, right? You're like, you know, it's just like that um, old uh, Carlos yeah, Mencia bit. He's like, you walk out of a kung fu movie. Man, I wish somebody were to fuck with me right now. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's how you feel about X Men and Wolverine and stuff. And it, and it's it's really cool. How many times have I seen X Men two? I don't know. Uh, not as much as I've seen X Men one, man. Ooh, or cool. Logan. Logan is um way up there, buddy. Um, so that's yeah, favorite Marvel characters. That's um pretty much. Sorry, I lost. I hit a button. And it ruined my life. I think the next one was favorite Stanley cameo. Yep, that's where we're going. So um, we want to share with you guys our our favorite cameos. If you could just pick one, because we're gonna we're gonna talk about his cameos after. I think we talked about it in the last film a little bit, but Amazing Spider-Man. That's my favorite Stanley cameo, hands down. Okay. Um. My favorite, because just because the cleverness and the irony of it. Granted, this might be one of the worst movies he showed up in, but it's always going to be Fantastic Four 2, Rise of the Silver Surfer. I've talked to you about this, I believe. When Reed and Sue are getting married, there is a line of guests waiting to come into the wedding. And he's like, I should be on the list. I'm Stan Lee. Exactly. Yeah. He, he shows up, and he, he doesn't even, like, he's not even checking with the guy. He tries to walk right by him. He sticks his arm out. He's like, name. It's like Stan Lee, not on the list. I should be on the list. I'm Stan Lee. Like, yeah. that's great. And I mean, there's another one that like, kind of almost ties that. But we'll, we'll bring it up. No, you know what? No, I have a tie for first. I'm sorry. I'm gonna cheat a little bit. Guardians of the Galaxy two. Guardians of the Galaxy two is a fantastic one. I also feel like it's a good easy cop out because it kind of combines all the MCU ones. And he even mentions his Civil War cameo in that yeah. scene. He's like, that and then was I was a Federal Express. Yeah. yeah. Um, that is a great one. Uh, so you guys, tell us what your favorite Stanley cameos are. Tell us uh, your fondest, um, I guess, um, memories because of Stanley are. Because um, you obviously probably don't know him. Um, tell us... Um, Any fun facts that you might know that maybe we don't? Yeah, fun facts. Um, in, anything about Stanley? Just share anything Stanley. Spam the page with Stanley. We're gonna love to hear it because this is a big thing for us. This is um, this is an absolutely um upsetting thing in, in, in a um. Group? Yeah. Um. Sorry. <laughs> what um? Would we be friends? What? <laughs> That's very true. We connected over Marvel. We probably wouldn't be friends if it weren't for the Avengers movie. Because I, I just I found out that you liked superhero movies. Yeah. Mainly like Marvel movies because there wasn't really DC movies at that time. Yeah. And finding somebody that has that niche interest with me. And if I, I didn't out, have I that like, interest. You're my buddy. If I didn't have that interest when he started the Think Now Network. I wouldn't have reached out to him and we wouldn't have had Fan Splash. And so Stan Lee. Whoa. <laughs> comes back to all of that Ben we wouldn't be as close as we are if it weren't for Stan Lee so tell us why Stan Lee is important to you and um, what he means to you Kelsey thank you for already putting something out um, anybody else if you have something to say feel free to upload it onto the Fan Splash uh, network um, on Facebook or email us um, thefansplash at gmail.com um we look forward to hearing anything that you have to say about Stanley and how much he meant to you. Um, cause Stanley meant a lot to the, uh, comic book community, the cinematic community, the cartoon community, and the general fandom. And here at fan splash, we are a splash of all the fandom and, uh, there would not be as big of a splash or even a wave at all without Stanley. So, more like a... so thank you, Stanley. Um, we will always remember you. Heroes always get remembered, but you know legends never die. Um, so until next time.
Excelsior. Excelsior. It's, it's all about you today, Stan. Excelsior.